Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are gonna be turning some cheap cane sugar from my favorite retailer, Aldi's Nuts, into pure anhydrous ethanol, which I don't have to crack down. But these are the yeasty little bastards we'll be using to do it. So this is Red Star Daddy, which uh, distillers dry active yeast. And apparently it can get up to about 20% alcohol under the correct conditions, which we are gonna be giving it. So, got my little uh, distiller's table here, and basically tells you how much sugar per gallon of mash gives you what percentage. So these are some one gallon jars. We're gonna be doing three and a half pounds of sugar in each of these. So, just a hair under one bag. And setting it up to ferment, I'll, uh, I'll put this heating belt on it with a little temperature controller. Hey, puppy. What you doing, bud? And after about a week's time, we should be around 20% alcohol. So I also have to get to building my still pretty quickly. <laughs> I'll be doing a separate video on that. That video might actually come out before this video. Let's get started. First things first, I need to clean the glassware because while we're going for a full-blown yeast infection, we do not want anything else infecting the sugar wash. So, first I'm gonna clean them out. Second, I'm gonna give them a rinse and star sand solution. This is a, uh, they don't call it a sterilizer, but it basically sterilizes everything in there. That way we don't have any bacteria reproducing, turning this batch into a sour. I love my sour beers, but don't want it here. All right, guys, so you can see I got a third fermenter set up here. Uh, I was not happy with having such a small amount of headspace. I still think this is too short. So, got a third fermenter set up here. <laughs> it's a bit of a redneck rig, but it should work. So now that the yeast have finished up their good old routine of burping and sharting, you can see I maintained them at a temperature 81 uh, throughout the fermentation. Should be around 20%. Let's, let's move on to distillation at this point. So here we are sometime later. Got the distillation apparatus running and of course because distilling your own spirits in the United States is illegal. Um, even if it's not for consumption purposes. I am just running water through uh, through the apparatus here, just so you guys can see how that would happen. That's some beautiful water coming over. Now the trick after this part is going to be getting the water out of the ethanol, because it, it reaches what's called an azeotropic distillation limit. So even if you try distilling it again at 95% ethanol water mixture, the water will continue coming over with it regardless of how many times you distill it. So what you need to do is use some sort of desiccant to pull the water away from the ethanol. And at that point, you have completely dry ethanol. So quick note here while this sucker's cooling down, I did get the solder joint to work here. So what I used was the Stay Bright uh, Harris Silver Solder. I think this is 3% silver if I remember correctly, and it's just an acid flux. So my, my issue the first go round was I actually had the joint too hot. You can see I kind of discolored the stainless, and that's just because I had it too hot, and the solder was beating up, and I screwed the joint. So no more need for flour paste there. It is silver soldered, works beautifully. So here we have our lovely store-bought alcohol. And let's see what percentage it came out of the bottle at. Uh, 74, 75-ish. Not too bad, I was hoping for a little higher, but uh, <laughs> you know those bottles, they can be tricky. And that is our percentage, not proof. Proof is double the percentage. So, to get this fully dried now, what we're gonna have to do is desiccate the water out of it. So this could be distilled to a higher level of purity. The, the azeotrope is at 95%. Uh, 
and at that point the ethanol will actually pull water over with it keeping its percentage at 95 um, so by distillation only you can't break uh, break above 95 percent pure ethanol but what we can do instead is chemically dehydrate it and suck the water out of it to uh, to fully separate it and to do that I'm going to be using some copper sulfate and this is currently pentahydrate what we're going to do is borrow the wife's little toaster oven get this to become anhydrous copper sulfate so we're going to basically heat the water out of it and it, at that point it's going to be looking to grab water again very quickly don't let your wife get you Here we are an hour later, and you can see the copper sulfate has gone from that lovely blue, and most of it's pretty well dehydrated at this point. Here's our dried copper sulfate, let it cool down, obviously you want to keep the uh, moisture away from it, so use some saran wrap here. And just going to open up our jar of ethanol here, and we're going to start adding copper sulfate to it to suck the water out of it. Quite a bit of warmth there generated from the uh, copper sulfate getting the water. I'm going to give this a few hours to totally absorb any water out of solution and then I'm going to add this to a boiling flask and we're going to distill over the pure ethanol. Alright, so it's been about 24 hours since I added the copper sulfate, the anhydrous copper sulfate to the ethanol water mixture. And now I'm going to add that to a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. Use a little saran wrap there. That way it sticks nicely, won't move on us. I should have a bigger funnel. So a lot of the ethanol is also going to be trapped between the uh, copper sulfate particles. So I'm going to have to kind of force them down into the funnel. <laughs> Don't get dirty ideas now. Now the other process you could use is literally just using molecular sieves to absorb all the water out of it, decanting, and then storing over some molecular sieves. I believe that's what Nile Red did in his video. It's been quite a while since I watched that, so I could be wrong. But here I'm using copper sulfate because it's much less expensive than molecular sieves. And if you don't have molecular sieves available, this is a, a good option. Now, of course, another great option is calcium oxide, uh, quick lime. So, got an oil bath here, just letting the oil heat up. And at that point, I'll uh, lower the distillation apparatus. And we should start collecting distillate, which will be anhydrous ethanol. So, you can see here on the vacuum adapter, I just have a uh, latex finger, or nitrile finger I cut off. And I just poked a little needle hole in it, so instead of uh, connecting the vacuum, I'm just using this to prevent atmospheric moisture from getting in. So you can see we're at a nice low boil there in the ethanol. And the great thing is, our little finger condom here is just lightly inflated. So obviously you don't want to build pressure in this, but just a hair over atmospheric pressure to keep you know, moisture and whatnot out of the system, not a bad thing. Look, the joint's wetting. Should be seeing drippage. Very soon. The first drip! <laughs> yes! The primary drip, which as opposed to the dribble, is not a khaki ruiner. So a lot of people love to tell you how strong their moonshine is, but this stuff will actually desiccate your tongue if you drink it.
All right, so the whole distillation ran right around 79.80, and now the temperature is starting to jump pretty quickly. And there's also some sort of color change going on with the copper sulfate there. It looks like the edges are getting more hydrated, which is the opposite of what I thought would happen, but just to make sure no water makes it over, I'm going to terminate the distillation at this point. Raise that up, and there we go. Looks pretty good. Oh, wow, that's kind of interesting. Okay, that's pretty cool. So if you look at the boiling flask, it looks like the bottom was actually, and the edges here, were starting to dehydrate the copper sulfate because I had this oil bath around like 130 or so. So that's why it's looking darker just outside the edge because that copper sulfate was then grabbing that extra water and converting to the pentahydrate, I would imagine. So, hence the color change. But the good news is the uh, inner bit of copper sulfate is still pretty lightly colored, so I don't think any water would have made it over. So as soon as we removed heat, you can see this uh, nitrile glove kind of sucked in, which means we got to stop atmosphere from getting in there. And there we go. That is our beautiful anhydrous ethanol. So I'm curious to see what kind of purity we got. Hopefully it's at 100. All right, so here is the moment of truth. Let's see what kind of percentage we actually got here. Oh, and it figures. There we go. Pulled a bit of a vacuum there. Oh, don't tell me we're short. Went too far. The azeotrope came over. All right, well, fuck copper sulfate. Uh, just over azeotrope. It's at like 96%. So I went a little too long with, or maybe a little too hot with my distillation there. Or maybe atmosphere was getting in. I don't think it would hydrate that quickly, though. So, we're up from 76% to 96. So that's still a good jump from the copper sulfate. Not bad. I was hoping this would be totally anhydrous at this point. I'm really surprised some water came over. But, uh, I guess at this point we got to use the molecular sieves. Probably should have reactivated these for a few hours before uh, using them. They've been sitting in this jar for a couple years. So, <laughs> make it all this freaking way, and sure enough, what has, uh, I shouldn't say killed our reaction, but or killed our progress, but this freaking molecular sieve powder, the zeolite powder, I cannot filter the damn stuff out. It is so fine. There's there's just no getting rid of it. So while I'm not happy with it, <laughs> there is our fun. And I mean it'll it'll settle over time and if I carefully decant off the uh anhydrous ethanol it won't be an issue. But there's our final product. Not sure how much. Probably uh hundred some mLs or so. Anhydrous ethanol, and just to ensure it stays anhydrous, so I'm sure the filtration process introduced some extra moisture. So I have since washed and cleaned these beads and then reactivated them, so uh, sieves rather. So these should not leave dust. If I was smart, that's what I would have done in the first place. Well, I guess we better take a gander at where the gravity's floating. <laughs> so, let's test it. Make sure we do have, in fact, anhydrous ethanol. Yes, this is a pretty crappy contraption here. Unfortunately, my uh, 100 milliliter graduated cylinder is not tall enough for the hydrometer here. Let's see where she's at. Woohoo! 
right at the 200 proof 100% mark. There we go. We did it guys. It might be cloudy, but we got anhydrous ethanol from freaking table sugar. Or, uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, alcohol from the store. Yes, taxes have been paid. So, although wildly impractical, a pretty cool push of chemistry to go all the way from table sugar to anhydrous ethanol. This video was a surprising amount of work. <laughs> <laughs> way more than I anticipated when uh, planning out the project. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll leave a link down below in the description. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, drop a comment, please. Much appreciated. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.